Well, hey guys, it's Viejo here, and we are in the third week of November in 2023, almost Thanksgiving Day, real close. I got uh, 69, almost 70 degrees out here in the garage. Beautiful day on the central coast of California. It's real dry, only 34% relative humidity. Hey, if you saw the previous video, you know that I just uh, brought this nice uh, Smith & Wesson 41 Magnum home. That's the Model 57. It's a Dash 6, so it's got the Hillary hole up there for a key lock, which we're not going to be using. But nonetheless, hey, what we're going to do today, let's get this hat out of the way, <clears throat> is we're going to check the cylinder throat diameters. I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can do this. Um, I'm going to rely mostly on my pin gauge set, but there's a couple of other techniques that are useful. Let's take a look. Okay, now first of all, it's uh, often easier to remove the cylinder to do this, but it's not going to be necessary with this big revolver today. So what I'm going to start with is kind of, let's try this and hope we get lucky method. Okay, so I've got some uh, Hornady 41 caliber XTP 210 grains here. And uh, Hornady claims 0 0.410 for the diameter of this bullet. Let's try that and see. Okay, we'll get a piece of paper here and clean those out a little bit. Okay, so we are zeroed here. So let's get in here on this bullet. And sure enough, dead on at 410. Try to avoid parallax. What I'm seeing is right on 410. And from your perspective, it may look off a little bit, but it's right dead on 410. Okay, I rotate it, nothing happening on that needle. Okay, so what I meant was, or by um, hope we get lucky. Let's see if this bullet at 0 0.410 will just drop through the cylinder, okay? And it does not go all the way through on that one. Incidentally, you can see this firearm is clear, okay? So there's that bullet, and it did not go all the way through, okay? In fact, I had to touch it. To get it out let's try a couple of other cylinders just for grins okay didn't go through that one either okay all of these seem to be doing the same thing okay whoops bullet drops in okay and it's a fairly tight fit in there okay that's what this was for incidentally so what's that telling me? That tells me I probably got lucky, okay? This 0 .410 um, bullet will not pass all the way through. That means that these cylinder throats are not more than 0 .410. And we want to know that because when it comes time to do our cast bullets, even though we're powder coating, I still like to size mine about 0 .001 above cylinder throat diameter in my revolvers, just to be sure that I get 100% um, obturation of that bullet as it exits the case and starts coming out of that, that uh, cylinder throat, okay? Now, <clears throat> suppose that you had uh, a situation where you had a .410 bullet, put it into your cylinder and it slipped right on through. Well, that would tell you that your cylinder throat's bigger than .410. Well, we already know that that cylinder throat is at 0 .410, but it's tempting to want to come in with calipers. And again, we're zeroed out here. And taking a measurement with calipers. Well, let me get a better angle on here for you guys. Let's try it this way. Okay, if we come right out here to the Come right out here to the edge of the cylinder. We're just under 0 .410 here, maybe a half a thousandth or so. Okay, try another one. 
This is really hard to do with my sore thumb. Okay, and again, we're just under 0 0.410, okay? We're trying, trying our best to hold these here straight. So about a half a thousandth under. Well, why is that? Why is this doesn't seem accurate when we measured this? It was claimed at 0 0.410 and it measured exactly 410. Well, it has to do with the fact that the edges of these jaws are not round, they're square. Let me show you on a piece of paper. Okay, so here's our calipers. And let's say that these marks in here represent the ends of these jaws that are square. Okay, and as we bring that set of calipers down in here then, okay, what's going to happen is that we've got this little space right there. You see that? And the same thing over here, the distance between the arc of the inside of that cylinder and the flat surface of that jaw that we're trying to measure against. And we're going to be off by those little uh, bits right there. Okay, so this measurement right in here and this distance right in there, we're not going to catch. And that's going to make this look a little bit smaller than it really is compared to if you use something rounded like the pin gauge. And we can get into the same kind of a dilemma using our uh, dial calipers if we try to use them to measure the case wall thickness of a piece of brass, okay, a brass casing, while the outside jaw will be exactly tangent to a point on that arc of the case mouth that we're trying to measure, the inside jaw is going to bridge across there and we're going to miss this little diameter right here, so we're not going to get uh, a good reading. Now this is a very exaggerated view, of course, okay, and the amount that's in here would not be anywhere close to that much on this scale, but just to illustrate the point. So what do you use here if you need to measure the case mouth? Well, you would need something that would come up and go exactly tangent to the inside of this case. And what we would use for that job would be a ball micrometer. So your ball micrometer then works like this. It has got an arced surface on the ball and that would go down inside your case and that puts the end of this tangent up against that arc, okay? And the same thing with our anvil side over here. Okay, that's gonna be tangent to the outside of the case and you're gonna get a much more precise reading that way. Okay, another way to do this then is with your cast bullets. I don't have a good example here to use, um, this one happens to be sized at 0.411, which is uh, turns out to be exactly where I'm going to want them for this firearm. But what you can do, you know, absent a good uh, set of calipers um, or a pin gauge set, is you can take a bullet of uh, the right caliber, uh, preferably as soft an alloy as you can come up with, um, that is... Uh, to your knowledge, slightly bigger than the diameter of your cylinder um, throats. And you can put that guy in there. Okay, and it's not going to fit until I open it, of course. Okay. And you can simply tap that guy in there until a good full driving band is in there. And again, use a soft alloy. Don't tap it in too far. Just tap it enough to size that bullet to your cylinder throat. And then you can take your dowel and tap it back out. Okay. Um, and again, using a very soft alloy, preferably just pure lead. Um, so you could do that, you know, if you've got a mold that you think is going to work that uh, typically casts a little bit larger than... Uh, designated caliber, heat up a couple of pieces of soft lead in your ladle and just pour it into the mold and give yourself a couple of bullets to work with. And you can tap it in there and bring it back out, okay? And then you can measure that diameter with your calipers. So that's a, a method that you could use also. If you're fortunate enough to have several uh, bullet sizers, okay, within caliber, 
Okay, for example, maybe you had a 0 0.409, a 0 0.410, and a 0 0.411. You could uh, uh, size several bullets to those and try them and see what you get. Okay, go with the one that just w won't quite get out the end of the cylinder. So I'm going to use uh, a couple of pins out of my pin gauge set. Okay, this one, let's see if I can get in there tight enough for you to see that. Okay. Let's zoom this a little bit better. Okay, this is the 0 .411 gauge, and these is, uh, this is a minus two um, set. So if this goes in, we could be off by two ten thousandths, okay? But this won't go in that cylinder, and it won't go in that cylinder, won't go in that cylinder. Not in that cylinder. I mean, it, it kind of wants to try to start in there, but it ain't happening. Not that one. And not that one. It won't go into any of them. Okay. How about this one? This is my 0 .410. And again, we see the minus sign there after the zero. Okay. So this guy, boy, it's there is very little wiggle room, and I had kind of had to twist it to go in there. That is a snug fit. That's another snug fit. Okay. This one feels a tad bit looser, but not by much. Same thing there. It's got to wiggle them in. Okay, that 0 .410 is a good fit here. So I'm going to go with all of these cylinders being right at 0 .410. And again, since this is a minus two set, that means that it could be two ten thousandths off at the most. So 0 .410 is good, and that tells me if I want my cast bullets to be sized at a thousandth over, if I size them at 0.411. I should be good to go, okay? I don't think I need to get them bigger than that. I'm happy to see that these are all so closely matched, okay? They, they did a good job at Smith, okay, on um, cutting those cylinders, okay? Another nice thing about this guy, and there is no shake. This thing locks up really tight, okay? They did that right. Okay, so I keep a, a record, as you can well imagine, for all of my firearms and for the revolvers I write down with those cylinder throats measure so I don't forget. Okay, I'll go uh, stick a couple drops of oil on these guys and put them back in the kit. Okay, guys, there you go. A um, couple different ways that you could approach measuring your cylinder throat diameter if you're using cast bullets. If you're not using cast bullets, it's not uh, really a big deal one way or the other. Um, I would not recommend anybody running right out and buying that pin gauge set unless you've got two or three guys locally to go together on it. They're expensive. And the set that I have is not an exceptionally expensive set. Mine is uh, from 0 0.250 up to 0 0.500 in 0 0.001 increments. And I've had that for quite a while, and I think I paid less than $100 for it. But I think, uh, well, I looked up on Amazon here um, recently. And they're half again as much as that now. So it's not something you necessarily want to run right out and purchase. So anyway, we looked at a couple of different ways where you could kind of get yourself an idea of what those cylinder throats measure. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of that. I've got my information on those cylinder throats written down on the um, data page that I keep for my revolvers. And I won't forget now they're all uh, tidied up on that uh, page. So that job is done. Hope you got something from that. But from the Viejo bench, for now, that's all she wrote. <laughs>